Hi there, it's Bat here from Fiery Phoenix. We're on to the third and final section of the Duckwheel Platypus tutorial from Funky Fence Factory. And this is the section where you actually get to sew him up and stuff him and hand finish him. So hopefully you've managed to stick with us for all three tutorials. And uh, let's get cracking and finish this little guy off. He's ever so sweet. Uh, they are patterns from Funky Friends Factory and um, the first tutorial will show you how to print off and prepare the pattern pieces. The second tutorial will show you how to then use those pattern pieces to cut out the fabric that these guys are made from. And the third and final tutorial will show you how to, uh, to then assemble stuff and finish off, hand finish off the, um, the, the really cute little platypus here. So hopefully you're going to stick around for all three of those sections and off we go. So you get given um, some excellent instructions with each and every Funky Friends Factory pattern that you uh, download or purchase. So we've already done the general preparation and cutting out, now we're on to the sewing and assembly portion. So um, I always keep the pattern pieces to hand just in case I need to refer to them if the marks haven't moved across adequately. Uh, because I always make teeny tiny marks when I uh, when I mark up the pieces, uh, just so that I can ensure they're not going to show through after I've used my quarter of an inch seam allowance. Now the first instruction is to sew the tummy piece, which is this large piece, to the bill base. And so what I do is match up the the marks. I'll pop a single pin in just to hold those those two together at the centre, and then sew down a quarter of an inch of the seam allowance. Any time that I may be turning, um, I always do a reverse stitch first. And I don't use my needle in the centre position, I move it across so that it's in the far left position, which means the far left position and the edge of my, my foot give me an accurate quarter inch measurement without having to worry about any special um, quilting feet or quarter inch feet. So just hold down the reverse stitch to start off and then sew along the edge. Always make sure the needle is in the down position if you are going to turn and lift the foot presser foot and never ever leave a needle in whilst you sew over it. So I'm just going to turn that slightly and then come back out. And then as we get to the end, we'll just do the reverse stitch. And that's the bill, bottom bill piece attached attached to the body piece. And you need to make sure that you've got the, uh, the right size facing. And you then need to sew the tummy pieces together, or rather the body pieces together. Oh, this is going to be a long, this lovely curving swoosh line, which gives him beautiful shape and undulations to his body. So again, we'll just pop a couple of pins in just to make sure that in general his body isn't moving around about the place. And then again I will do a quick reverse stitch and then move on to following the curves of his body. Now if you're not too confident, go slowly. You can always pause. Make sure the needle's in the down position any time you stop. needle doesn't quite stop automatically in the down position, just hand crank it forwards, forwards never reverse, to, uh, to get it in a position that you want. Try and follow the curving shape as closely as possible so that uh, you give him the nicest body shape and back shape that you can because it's those curves that really work. And then again as we reach the end, a quick little back stitch just to secure the end pieces. And there we have the, the back all sewn together. Trim off the excess threads. And then the next piece is to attach the two pieces of the bill together. So this is the bottom of the bill piece. And 
the top of the bill piece. And again, you'll find that we transferred the markings, um, which also helps us know which is the wrong side and which is the right side. And then we need to, uh, to transfer those. So this is the top, this is the bottom, and this is where we're going to sew along at the top of the bill piece. So the top of the bill piece, just to double check, is this side. And this is going to be sewn along this piece. So we have right sides together. Pin across the centre so that we keep that together. And then sew along. Again, a little bit of a back stitch to start us off. We should now have the body piece, the tummy attached to the bill, and the top of the bill attached to itself. And now what we're going to do is sew all the feet together. Now I may well fast forward through all of the sewing of the feet. But so we take the two pieces, make sure the pen is on the reverse so that we know that that is the wrong side, and keep the right sides together. Pin those together near the centre and we definitely want to do a reverse stitch here and here. So make sure that when we turn we have a nice strong seam that we can rip apart. Maintain that quarter of an inch as much as you, as closely as you can throughout and turn even if you need to leave the needle down and lift the foot to turn, you do that to keep your quarter of an inch around the shape of the foot. Once you've come a certain way through, you can take the pin out because it will get in the way, but also you've then got a secure, secure footing for the shape. You can then turn. Maintain the shape as much as possible. All those lovely curves. Don't raise the foot unless the needle is down. If you do that, you will lose the position and then you will have a very unattractive looking foot. get on and sew the others. I'll be back to you in a minute. So now that we've got all of his feet we need to clip and then turn them the right way out. So once it's turned what I do is I use the blunt chopstick or a blunt skewer to poke through the end. I'll just get on with the others. Now what I would recommend is actually pressing each of these feet. I'm not going to do that as part of this tutorial but I would recommend that you press each of them to get the nicest shape that you can actually arrange for them. Because well, the next stage is actually inserting them into a body. So we have the top of the body. And again, we need to just gently clip, being very careful not to actually touch the stitches, the two inner curves, which gives it a nicer transition, a nicer smooth curve on the outside. And we need to pin 
the feet into position. Now we have already marked where the feet will go. And pop them on the inside and just pin it. Take off the end. Do the top of the bell. Pin and sew that through. <laughs> So that's the, the top of his head. Take off the excess threads. And now we can pin all the way around. All those lovely curves should line up. And at some point you have left a marking that shows where we're going to leave a gap. So I'll put my pins either side of that gap to remind me. I'm terrible, terrible at remembering where I need to leave my spaces. And we take out the pins that we were using to, to hold that initial position and fit the feet. Now if you're not confident, use more pins. If you're really not confident, uh, you can go around and you can hand tack. I'm quite happy to use the pins without hand tacking, but it really is a personal preference. You need to make sure that the bill pieces line up and what makes a nice, a nice join is if you can actually have one seam going one way and one seam going another so that you don't get the thickness. You can feel that they've, they've nested quite happily. And then we have the marks for the centre of the bills. Make sure they're aligned. And we come back round the other side. And again, we're going to nest these seams one one way and the other. And then move around the rest of the body. Again, making sure that those feet pieces are as wide open as you can make them. And remember that there'll be a lot of, of loose fabric in the centre because that's what gives Platy his body shape. So don't worry that you've got this ridge along the centre line there. time you can go all the way around the edge. Don't need to worry this side about a, a gap. You only need the stuffing space on one side, the turning gap. So we'll start one side of the gap, we'll finish on the second side of the gap and let's sew all the way around. And remember strengthen it with a reverse stitch because you're going to be turning the entirety of his body through this gap you do not want it to give way whilst you're turning. And what you can do is open out this seam with the needle down at the left foot so you can start to move that seam piece across. And that can then become flattened out. 
gives you a third point as well. There you go, guys, down. Turn. Excuse me. Turn for a nice even point and then come back up the other side. Maintain your sleeve allowance. Make sure that you're catching both sides of the fabric as you sew. Make sure that you turn or adjust anything, the needle stays down. If you want, you can hand crank it round and then turn straight across the foot. Needle down, turn. Following down the curves of the body again. Good. Take the needle out. So across. Good. Make sure those little feet are out of the way. If you need to make adjustments as you go, that's all good. You have that ability when you're sewing. Come to the seam allowance. The nesting of the seam. Lift the foot as often as necessary to maintain the nice panel. Remember, at this point, you will be sewing across the uh, bias of the fabric, so don't try and stretch it too much. We're going to very misshapen the, and whichever way the um, the uh, the join in the beak or the bill lay, it needs to do the same on the other side. Feel for the nesting of these seams. Go around and go straight to the end. Past there, we can then start matching the rest of the curves up. And on to the final portion of the foot. Pivot straight across. to be catching in your side seam. Double check that everything's been caught all the way around, in which it has. I'll move some of these excess threads that have been caught up. Such a mucky workspace. Right, let me take that off, trim round the inner curves as we have before. We have so many inner curves. This 
is the moment of truth when we turn him right side out to see. See him in his glorious ugliness. Bill, we have some feet. We have four feet, which is always a good sign. And none of them are sewn into anything. And then we have his tail. So here we have an empty plating. Our next portion will all be about stuffing and stitching him. Now the last piece that we need to machine sew is the detailing around the edge of his bill that gives him his little smiley face. So I shall just use my incredibly long, long skewer and even out mouth just make it as, as curved as we can very gently and then with a quarter inch stitch I shall, shall sew around the side of his face which will give him the smile that makes him so sweet. And again we want to back stitch we do not want any of these stitches coming apart. you want it to be. Continue round. And then slide off. Just give him his little smile. And I'll trim that up neatly. And then what we'll do is, is stuff and stitch his eyes and then I'll show you how to do the ladder stitch to close this opening. See you in a bit. So now we've got um, toy stay for stuffing. Always use toy stay for stuffing. Always use toy stay for stuffing when you're working with these these animals, with these uh, these little little creatures. Um, and just shovel it in, poke it down. You can go for a very, very firm filling or you can go for something slightly softer. Now with, with Platy, I quite like him to have a firm beak and a firm forehead, but for the rest of them to be quite soft. Makes him rather cuddly. <coughs> and you can see how this top stitching that we've just done maintains the shape of the bill and um, of the duck bill and then gives him ever such a sweet little smile where the edges come off which is part of his charm. Pauline has done an amazing job keeping the, the, the really cute factor in each of her designs. They're, they're very very easy to work with as you can see and yet they are incredibly impressively cute. So you can of course have very complicated designs that just look very complicated and there is no cute factor at all. Whereas these guys look absolutely darling. And Pauline has done a brilliant job. So I'll just pop one last little piece in I think and then see where we are. 
Is that sturdy enough or is that not? Give it a little waist. There's a nice firm head. Right, just sort his tail out a little bit more, I think. A tiny bit more for his tail. And maybe a little bit more for his bottom. You can always roll the stuffing around, literally roll it around to, uh, to move it about the body cavity. Good old squeeze when you want them to go in. And push for where you need them to come out. So I think that's enough, and then we can move on to, to sewing up the ladder stitch along here. Right then, so we're now moving on to the final stage where we're going to sew on some eyes. I'm going to be using blue thread for his eyes and we're going to be stitching up using a ladder stitch the stuffing area. So we take a, a needle and we're going to knot the thread. You just twist it around twice and then roll it off the end of your thumb, pull it tight and then you end up with a nice chunky knot which means you can bury that inside the seams quite happily. But we'll thread that needle and then move on to, to the ladder stitch. So I'm going to put the needle through, keeping it close to the seam as possible. And then a ladder stitch is formed simply by going in one side along and then crossing over to the other side and going along. So as you'll see after a few stitches, which I'm not going to tighten up until the end, this then starts to form a ladder shape, which is what gives the stitch its name. So as you can now see, you're getting that, that ladder shaping. It's not a whip stitch. It's not just, just going over and over and over. It is going up, along, across, up and then across. And when you pull this tight, everything then folds down and creates a new seam for you. It matches in with the original. So this is a very nice, neat way of finishing off any, any stuffing seam, any stuffing holes or joins. So I'll just get this one finished and then we'll move on to the French dot and we'll move on to the French knots for his eyes. Now to finish him off, to tuck away the ends of this seam, I form a knot around the last stitch. And I do that twice, so that's once. And then a second time, Get that travel down, and then I bury, bury the end, pull it tight, and it will ping back. Make sure not to snip the fabric. And there you have his his sealed tail. You can give him a little bit of a squeeze to make sure he's the shape that you want him to be. And we change the thread. Nobody wants to see red eyes on their platypus. I think we're going to pop a little bit of blue. And what I'm going to do is double, double it up. So that we have two layers, which will give us a, a stronger, stronger looking French knot. So we decide where we want his little eyes to be. And where I've doubled it up, we can then put the needle through the loop, which you can hopefully, oops, as you can see against the tablecloth. And then that gives us a nice secure, secure starting point. So we put the needle through, and then we wrap around three times. Once, twice, three times. 
pull it out, keep those down, and then feed that back through, and then come across to the other side, and do the same again. So we sew it through, we wrap it round, once, twice, three times, and then what you can do instead of holding it loose, you can just sew that back down almost immediately. And then if you want to increase the size of the, uh, the eye that you've got, you do that a couple of times on each side. Once, twice, three times. Pull it tight. Hold it down and then sew back in. You can of course use seed beads but that makes it slightly more dangerous for a small child. So the French knot method is, is much nicer. It's safer. And there we have it. One, two, three. Hold it down. In. I think I'll put one more on this side. Oh, it's a darker side, you can't see the eye so well. So here we have Platy with his French knotted eyes. He's got the delightful beak, which has a, a nice little smile with the top stitch. Um, it's all very neatly stitched in at the back. And um, hopefully he's been of some use. This tutorial is of some use to you. And if you've enjoyed this tutorial, it's helped you out with your making of your, your soft toys from, uh, from Funky Fence Factory, then please give it a thumbs up. Have a look around the rest of the channel. See if there's anything else that inspires you. If there isn't, and you've got some suggestions, please give me a, a shout. Drop a message into the comments below. And, um, and then we'll see if I can make up a video especially for you. If so, then you'll get a shout out if you come up with a, a new suggestion that's inspiring for others. So uh, hopefully I'll see you around again and um, hopefully we'll have some more Funky Friends Factory designs that will be created just to show you how simple, how easy and how well written they are. Um, until then, I'll see you later. Bye!